Hey guys, today we're gonna talk about how to find the perfect cigar for you. What's up guys, welcome back to Gen Slounge. I'm George, if you have not hit that subscribe button yet, please do that right now. We are here every week talking about men's fashion, lifestyle, and everything in between. And today we are back at the King Cigar Lounge with Pierre from Puro Trader. And today, Pierre's gonna take us through the different shapes, sizes, blends, everything you need to know about finding the right cigar for you. So when it comes to picking out your first cigar, usually the first cigar you smoke is something that's given to you. You're not going to a cigar shop finding your first cigar. So you don't really have a choice <laughs> in, in most people's first cigar experiences. But if you do have a choice when you find yourself at a cigar humidor, we are gonna tell you kind of what to look for and what you're gonna get out of the different shapes, sizes, and I guess a little bit of the colors as well. That's right. Yes. So one of the things that you have to sort of go into this knowing is, do you want a, a stronger cigar or a more mild cigar? That's one. And then two is how long do you have to smoke that cigar? Um, so there's a couple things that are a little bit counterintuitive. So for a lot of guys who go, man, I want a big, strong cigar, I want a lot of flavor, they'll oftentimes choose a cigar like this. Very large ring gauge and a whole lot of tobacco because they think, well, more tobacco equals more flavor and that's what I want. Um, in particular, women tend to do the opposite of this, right? They say, well, I'm, I'm, I'm a girl. I want a lady cigar. I want a lady cigar. I want something more petite. Um, because it'll be, it'll be more mild for me. That's actually exactly backwards. So one of the things that controls flavor is the amount of tobacco, the amount of air, and the amount of heat. So actually with bigger ring gauge cigars, because there is so much more air in that ratio, they actually tend to be more mild, where skinnier cigars or, or smaller ring gauge cigars have a lot less air, thus a lot more heat and tobacco, so the flavor is actually stronger. So if you're looking for something more mild, a larger ring gauge is actually the better way to go. And if you're looking for something stronger, a thinner ring gauge is oftentimes the way to go. Right, and then the, the length is just basically the time of the smoke. So if it's a short fat cigar, it's gonna be mild and less time. Right. If it's long and thin, it'll be strong and longer. That's right, that, that's the best way to go about thinking about that. So this is a Lancero, so very, very long, thinner ring gauge. This is really what aficionados really tend to gravitate towards is Lanceros. It's been a format that's been around for forever. It tends to be much more fuller in flavor and is a considerable amount of time. So this cigar is an hour, hour and a half, uh, depending how quickly you smoke it. So, and it will be a very rich smoke. Here, we have uh, this cigar from Camacho. This is a 62 ring gauge, a really big fat cigar. Um, medium in length. This will actually only take about an hour to smoke, but it'll actually be much, much more mild. Uh, and I use these two as, as sort of extreme opposites to give you kind of a demonstration of both ends of the spectrum. Most of us probably fall somewhere in between where we want something more in the traditional sort of Corona or Robusto size. Right. Sort of average ring gauge, average length. So here we have one of my favorite cigars. This is a Padron, a 1926. Mine as well. It's a fantastic cigar made in Nicaragua from the Padron family. This is their natural wrapper. This cigar will last you about 45 minutes. It'll be medium bodied. Fits really nice with almost any smoker. So if anybody gave you a Padron or something in this range, whether you're a beginner smoker or advanced, this is probably something you're gonna enjoy uh, they, quite a they lot. They probably like you a little bit as well. Yeah, absolutely. They're, these are not inexpensive. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. And then lastly, we have what are called shaped cigars, also known as figurados, right? Shaped cigars can be anything from sort of torpedoes to more advanced things like this Fuente, um, where it is shaped on both ends of the cigar. Now, because of its shape, it changes its flavor more. Mm -hmm. They also tend to be much more expensive. So you get a little variety. Right. Um, because if you think about it, here you have this very small Figurado tip. So in the beginning, it's more like a Lancero, mm -hmm. right? So it's very small, high heat, uh, not a lot of air. So the flavor starts really strong. And then it opens up to actually a fairly large ring gauge here in a short distance. So you go from really strong and then it instantly mellows out within a few puffs. So it has this really nice cascading effect with flavor. Figurado cigars tend to be more expensive. And the reason is the rollers that make them have to be very, very skilled. So these are tend to be senior rollers and thus that cost is passed on to us. So we didn't really talk a little bit about um, 
kind of the wrapper or the color of the cigar. I know a lot of people tend to think Maduro, which is the darker wrapper, are stronger cigars, and then like something like a Connecticut, which is a lighter wrapper, is a lighter cigar. Mm -hmm. But I mean, it really depends on what's inside as well, right? Very much, very much. So, is that any kind of an indicator? Sometimes. No, unfortunately, <laughs> it's not. So I, I'd love to tell you like darkness equals more flavor, right? Um, but it's not a linear line that way. It can be an indicator, but not always. So a good Maduro wrapper such as we have here on this Fuente, um, can be richer, but it can also be sweeter, mm. right? A good Maduro tends to have a sweet finish. So if you've ever had a great cup of espresso, right. espresso can be rich, but if it's a really well-made espresso, it actually has some sweetness. The problem with trying to judge a car, excuse me, a cigar by its color is you don't know what the filler is made out of, right. right? Which is the bulk of the tobacco you're smoking is of course what's inside. One word you can look out for is a word called lajero. So lajero is the top of the tobacco plant. Uh -huh. It's the top couple of leaves. That through photosynthesis gets the most amount of sunlight. Obviously it's at the top of the plant. It tends to be the strongest in flavor. So sometimes you'll see cigars that say lajero, double lajero, etc. If you're looking for strong, you want lajero. If you don't want strength, <laughs> stay away from lajero. That tends to be that really big tobacco taste uh, that some people either really enjoy or want to stay away from. I know there's like Dominican blends, Nicaraguan blends. Does does that affect the strength? I mean, no, it affects the flavor, but does it affect kind of the strength you're getting? Like, are you going to get a lighter smoke with a Dominican wrapper or does it just depend on the type of tobacco that's grown there? It's a good question. So I'm going to overgeneralize a little bit and I'm sure this is going to pop up in the comments, <laughs> but um, Dominican tobacco tends to be a bit more mild okay. and Nicaraguan tobacco tends to be a little richer, right? That has to do more with soil content, not just the type so of tobacco that they use. With the, exactly the, right. Same with wine, yes. the tobacco where it's grown and how it affects flavor. Correct. Uh, and you can even come right down to looking at the amount of oil present on the cigar. So if you look at, for instance, I'll use some extreme examples, uh, a Davidoff with a nice Connecticut wrapper, it beautiful, very like light tan, light khaki. Think of it with sort of coffee with too much cream in it. Right. Versus a Nicaraguan tobacco like this Tatuaje or even this Padron has a, a sort of a oil sheen over the wrapper. Like coffee, when you're smoking, it's the oil that's present in the tobacco that provides the flavor. That's why we have to use humidity so that the oil doesn't evaporate. Wow, I did not know that. <laughs> that's, that's why it's there. So one of the issues that we have is the more oil that is present on the cigar almost always equals more strength okay. in the flavor. You're going to only be able to see that with the cellophane off the right. cigar, of course. But that being said, that's a quick way to judge strength. So like a light, a light shine is going to be stronger than something that's a little duller. Correct. Things to consider. How much time do you have to smoke? What are you eating or drinking to go along with it? Makes a big difference. It's probably the next video. Pairings. Right, pairings. What your preferred flavor profile is. More mild to strong. I like to use a scale of one to 10, 10 being strong, one being very mild. Most of us sit somewhere between a four and a six most of the time. Right. Um, and that fits for, for a lot of us. So a couple things to remember is ring gauge matters just as much as what the tobacco is actually, uh, the blend is actually made from. So think about that as well, and as well as time. So once again, thank you so much for doing this with us. We really appreciate it. Um, if you guys have any cigar questions, leave them in the comments below. I will get them to Pierre and we will get some answers. Um, thank you to King Cigar Lounge for having us. If you guys are in LA and wanna come smoke a cigar, leave me a comment down below, we'll meet up. And if you have not hit that subscribe button yet, please do that right now. Follow us on Instagram, at Jens Lounge, and we will see you on the next one, guys. Cheers.